ready? It's time to talk sports. No! National, national, local, local, professional, completely unprofessional, high school and college. Let's take it even further off the hook. It's the Zach Gelb Show. We are rolling on, on Fox, Fox Sports, Sports 920, 920 the, the Jersey. Jersey. All right, welcome back in. Hour number two, the second and final hour of our fine radio program. This is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey, the brand new Fox Sports 920 AM, Bucks, Burlington, Mercer Counties, or worldwide on the web at 920thejersey.com. I'm Zach Gelb. We come to you today from Miller's Ale House in Mount Laurel, 554 Fellowship Road. And I know in Miller's Ale House they have the zinger. Uh, that's the big uh, food item to get. So I'm sure you're enjoying uh, your zingers and your Corona Light today as we are powered by Corona Light. If you want a Corona Light T-shirt, just come on up to the set. We also have uh, some free money that we're giving away uh, with the scratch-offs, uh, some UFC DVDs, and then also uh, we have the Trenton Thunder tickets against the Reading Phillies for a big series at the conclusion of the Trenton Thunder regular season. So this hour... The majority of it is going to be Philadelphia Eagles, and we're going to get you ready for the 2016 season. And there's a lot of people probably better than I could have got, but (laughs) no one that I enjoy talking more with uh, than James Seltzer, who joins us right now. And James and myself, James did the college radio show before mine in college, and I always heard this voice screaming in the studio, and I'm like, what prepubescent uh, 14-year-old kid did they allow in college? And then I walked in, and James told me he was 35. The ladies <laughs> producing our show today, uh, the great Lauren and Liz, they thought you were. The general consensus was 28, so you still look good. I'll, I'll um, take it. I'll and, take and, it. And yeah. I'll say this. You probably got ID'd when you walked in. <laughs> I, I always get ID'd. I, I always do. See, so. n- now I'm a punk because I'm only 22. <laughs> I know. I know and, right? and, I, and I make it seem like I'm, like, 40 years yeah, old been doing radio for a bunch of years. And you're calling me prepubescent, right? Yeah, I was, right? like, already through puberty by the time you were born, so that's always good, right? <laughs> that, 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 that is true. So how are things been, man? Good, man, good. It's exciting times. We, uh, as, uh, as you had mentioned before, BGN, BGN Radio. Yep. yep, bleedinggreennation.com, and uh, BGN Radio is the, the offshoot of it where we do the podcast and whatnot, and uh, we just signed a deal to – be a part of WIP in Philadelphia. So we are really, See, really excited. This is one of the all-time great stories. Like, what you were able to do is why we need a training camp and you also <laughs> still need preseason games. Because you guys, with what you did, and it's remarkable. And I've been someone, you know, not on a 50,000-watt station and someone that's had to start up my career when I was in high school, finding my way to the Super Bowl, uh, when I was in college, and getting all those contacts and going to cover the games. And we're really like those, not even a seventh-round draft pick, we're the undrafted free agents. Yeah. And you have to make that way up to the top. And now you're at Sports Radio 94 WIP, and I'm not someone that bashes the competition unless if, like, I really hate you. I love Sports Radio 94 Me too. WIP. I interned there. Uh, Angelo and uh, Rhea Hughes and uh, all those uh, people at Sports Radio 94 WIP. Spike have been very kind to me. So I, I give you a big round of applause because I-, I think you guys have tremendous leadership. And BGN, it's not some small site. And that's what happens when you have someone that's not on the radio. People try to bash your credibility, and you have those stupid Twitter haters. But what you guys have been able to develop, and I've experienced that as well, it's remarkable. And now you're on a mega station, and you guys were on a mega station last year as well. But now you're on in what this town is like. The history. Oh, yeah, it's man. the granddaddy of them all. I grew up stations. listening to it, man. Like right? this WIP, I was listening to Mac and Mac back in the day. <laughs> right, Tony you know, Mac. Mike and Steve when they were there and, and all that old stuff. Like that was the station I grew up yeah. with. So to actually get an opportunity to go there and crack a mic and produce shows and all that is a and, really exciting thing. And just like you, even though I'm only 22, I'm a radio geek. Always have. You know, I may be this big, tough guy with the boisterous uh, claims on the radio and everything, but I grew up in radio. My, sure. my dad worked at WFA, and he was at WCAU. Um, and I know Howard Eskin claims that he saved the Philadelphia Eagles, but I told this story last week uh, to Mark Eckel. My father was the producer the night that called Leonard Toast and Get in his hotel at, at the Phoenician. Wow. And he called Leonard Toast because back then you don't have uh, all those sites uh, uh, where people are afraid to go to those sites and you have um, not those fake names in the hotel. And Leonard Toast had his real name. My dad called him wow. up and he goes, it's Bob Gell from WCAU. Let me talk to Leonard Toast's room. They transferred him in, and he goes, hey, it's Bob Gelb. And Leonard Toast goes, get the F off my (laughs) lawn. And they went back on the air. I believe it was Don Henderson. And and even um, they broke the story and everything. And and even on my show, 
I open the show every day saying live from the palatial yet not overly ostentatious studios, and that's a Steve Fredericks thing. So I'm a radio geek, and yep. I knew you were a big Mike and the Mad Dog fan, and I grew up in the rat hole of Kaufman Astoria that's Studios. That's my number one. Man. Right? Mike it, and the Mad Dog. Nothing's I, better. Nothing. Look, they, what, I, I'm a big believer in chemistry, in mm-hmm. radio, in chemistry, whatever sure. you do in, in, in this business. You also have to hate each other, Yeah, too. but that was the thing. It's like it didn't matter. <laughs> oh, it, they, they hated could not each talk other. to each other all day, go mm-hmm. up, and have the best chemistry you've ever heard on the radio, and then not talk to each yeah, other again. There would be amazing. times they wouldn't talk for months. I, I believe it. I've heard those and stories. then the next thing you know, they're delivering one of the greatest interviews you ever have heard. And, and people talk about the landscape of radio. I was driving in today, and people go, I was listening to a podcast. And one of the podcasts goes, oh, radio's dying. It's dead. It's old. It's antiquated. Radio, yes, you have to make some alterations. It's like Chip Kelly. Everyone moaned that Chip doesn't adapt, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have to adapt with the times. Sure, people now listen to a lot of the times these shows not on the radio. They listen on Their phones. the iPhones. Yeah. But there's a streaming way to do that. You have to come up with these creative segments. But still, when Doug Peterson is on – during the season on a radio show you're listening to it. Or last week when we had Dave Haxtell on, well, actually that was th- this week, uh, start of Monday this week, people tune in and listen because they want to hear that, and they also want to hear the opinions. And as you know, and, and you'll see more, especially at Sports Radio 94 WIP that just has such a loyal following, it's all about the fans. Yeah. You, you do the show thinking about the fans. And, yes, you may have controversial topics. You may have things that the fans don't like. But you do the show for the fans, and it still gives the fans a platform to call in. And if I have a hot take or you have a hot take that you hate, they go, oh, James is a moron. <laughs> oh, who let this guy on the radio? Or Gelb's a moron. And yeah. that's still the beauty of our business. No, it's a great point. And, and going back to the master's degree that I do have. Right. Thank you. I got uh, confused <laughs> with the amount of degrees that um, you have. No, but the, uh, when I was getting my master's, I actually wrote a paper at Temple about radio, local radio, and why it is still okay wow. and why it hasn't died. And, and the biggest thing is that localism. That ability for people to interact one on one with the hosts, with the you know players, whatever it is, who are on the on the air, it's it that's the heart, like the lifeblood, and you can't get that on the you know on the internet or what you know serious. You can't get the no. same type of thing. And, and, and with John, and it's also the local aspect. Yes, too, local exactly. because you could listen to Sirius, and I know we're a national station as well, but that local show. Well, everything's national now, right? I mean, you yeah, know, every every yeah, station has an app. Or yes, this but you or that. still need your local show. Absolutely, like, our station works. Our station's good. Dan Patrick is great. Colin Coward is great. But you need still that yep. local show. Especially in a city like Philadelphia yes. because we are provincial. We mm-hmm. do really care about our teams and don't give a crap and, about any others. And what makes my job fun for my first job out of college is it's, we're in New Jersey. We're in Princeton. Yeah, you get, so you even get, though this is a short ride home for me for Philadelphia, my job, I never know what to expect. And it keeps me on my toes because one day the Eagles could be the lead story. Then the Jets, then the Giants, yeah, the Mets, the Phillies. Them down, it's great. And you have to break all that in. It, it's kind of like a melting pot. Uh, that's what I, what I compare it to. But uh, you guys have a tremendous leader, and you guys have a good team with you and John. And I think John's on tonight, actually. John will be on 10 to uh, 2 a.m. On, okay. on WIP so tonight. Th- th- that, that's perfect. So yeah. you guys are getting that exposure. How did you and John meet? You, uh, you work with a lot of Johns, <laughs> by the way, because no, we were in college. What was the yeah. name of your show? John Cargan. Me and John Cargan fired up. It was fired called, up. Ring get, the bell. We used to get a little fiery there. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, no, that was fun. But, yeah, no, John Barchard and I uh, – uh, and Brandon Lee Gautner, the three people who started BGN Radio. And he just moved stations, right? Or uh, moved Brandon the, uh, Gautner actually sites. just accepted he is going to uh, take Tim McManus' spot at the new Birds Tim, 24-7. Tim Philly moved Mag, on to ESPN. ESPN, yeah. yeah. And Tim's, Tim's an awesome, Great. awesome guy. Um, but, yeah, so the three of us started. It was actually pretty funny because John went to Brandon to start it, and John had started this stupid, you know, he'll, he'll say stupid himself, Philly sports podcast, just like four for four. And he would just yeah. have local people, people working in the business, whatever on. We say stupid is that's what we were doing. Exactly, college, exactly. <laughs> um, but he, he shot me a, a, a message on Twitter and he was like, hey, I really like, you know, you're producing. And, and when you go on air, he's like, do you want to just hop on my podcast with me? That's awesome. Yeah, and we did it. And so you were at 97.5 before I that. was at 97.5, oh, okay. yeah. I so interned that's you had the there and I, I was a producer there until I went over to WIP. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, so then he, I, I hop on, and we ended up talking for like an hour and a half on the podcast. It's supposed to be like 20 minutes. We're like, wow, this is really fun. And uh, he got the BGN thing, and we went out for beers, and we're like, let's do this, man. See, so, and that's the best sports talk. Yeah. And I know you can't have beers on the air, but sports talk should be at a bar, having exactly beers, right. you know, drinking all the corona that we have that yes. we're powered by today, and also, you know, having food and just talking real guy talk. Like sometimes people get confused, and they think, 
you need a PhD in everything with sports. And someone comes on and they're such a pretentious person and say, oh, I told you this, I told you that. We're going to be wrong. I'm wrong every day. Oh, my day. God, yes. But Absolutely. That, but if you are entertaining and if you're fun, that's what makes a good show. And, totally agree. And, and I've listened to you guys when you guys were at 97.5. And I liked how you brought on those different guests. You did the picks yeah. uh, with Kyle from Crossing <laughs> Kyle Scott, uh, sure. Broad. And then you, you have great personality. You did that, ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun, man. It's, we like to have fun with it. We, you know, I feel like sports talk doesn't have to necessarily. You can still get information across, yes. content across, and still have a really good time doing it. Um, and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be about bashing people or about this or about that. It can be, it can be positive as well while still, you know, having strong takes on things. So in your career, and this is always a fun question that I throw around, and we'll do some Eagles talk coming up at the uh, 5.15-ish break. Um, what was so far in your career, because you graduated college, what, four years ago? I, well, gr- yeah, grad school four years ago. Okay, so, so you got back into the swing of things four years ago. Yes. Yeah, so I was a freshman. That makes sense, because mm-hmm. I didn't see you after freshman yeah. year. <laughs> um, and now we're having a re- big reunion <laughs> here best. today at Miller's Ale House. What is the best day on the job so wow, far? Man. And what's the worst day on the job? Well, the worst day is easy. I was about two months in uh, at 97.5, and we had just gotten the Flyers contract. Yes. We were airing Flyers games, and it was actually Craig Berube's first game as the head chief, coach. Yeah. The Chief, And also the first Flyers game I was working, and I had also been undertrained mm-hmm. and thrown on the board. Um, that, that's what I say about radio. Yeah. We're a communication business, but none of us communicate well. Nope. And, uh, like, basically, you know, everything that could have gone Bad went bad. We were off the air for about a minute and a half. I literally, I was like, my, I think my career's over. It was that bad. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, able to bounce back up and, and whatever. Um, and, and otherwise, I mean, I, I think it has to be the best day was that first time me and John got on 97.5 last mm-hmm. year and got to actually do a show on, Phil, like, a real Philadelphia radio station. That was, yeah. that was, I mean, we were, like, we did our first, the first segment was 25 minutes, and we finished, and we were, like, running around the studio, like, <laughs> freaking out, high-fiving, so it was just so much fun. Celebrating, like, Ryan Lochte <laughs> and all his friends, right? <laughs> Hopefully not quite like Lochte. <laughs> you don't have blue hair, and, no. and you're not a dope enough to lie yes, and make yes, up that story. That correct. And now I see that jackass is doing Dancing with <laughs> the know. Stars. It's the perfect, and you talk perfect about a publicity whore, yes. uh, that's Ryan Lochte. <laughs> Everyone, like, sometimes say, oh, there's some things as... No bad publicity. Yes, there's things as bad publicity. <laughs> yes. He got that, and now people are saying, oh, and he's thinking to himself, oh, that was, that was good when it <laughs> yeah. just happened when it's not. Um, not so, the brightest. So, <laughs> so BGN on Sports Radio 94 WIP. So give me what time the show is going to be on, if you know, and then also what a weekly show is going to be like sure. when you guys are on air. Sure. Um, we are going to be on 6 to 8 starting uh, – uh, until baseball season ends. It's the first Saturday before football season, so mm. September 10th. We'll be on 6 to 8, and then John and I will actually be on two more hours together, but not under the BGN radio tag. Oh, that's so to speak. awesome. So it'll be very cool. We get, bo- get to do both. So you're doing always, four hours. Yeah, we'll be doing wow. four hours, and uh, and then as soon as Philly season is over, it'll be from 4 to 6 on Saturday. And, and that's on a Saturday night. So what yeah. does your wife think of that? Uh, there she, goes your Saturday see, night. See, here's the thing. My wife has, She's has happy dealt with, with the cash. And not even that. <laughs> like, she has dealt with me being a, a lowly producer for years and work every <laughs> single weekend, every single holiday. I mean, she's a saint. But uh, what yeah, does she so do for a living? She actually, she's the the breadwinner. She uh, yeah, she there at, we go. She works at Penn Hospital in their uh, uh, healthcare uh, future for excuse me, the study for healthcare innovation. So okay, so she's she works a, at she's a hospital. An innovator, yes. Yeah, she, so she's smart. When you eventually have a kid, things. you know what hospital you're <laughs> yes, going there you to. Because go. I'm exactly. sure she's pressuring you for that since you are 35. <laughs> but uh, this is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. James is going to be hanging out with us. For the rest of the show, we are here today at Miller's Ale House in Mount Laurel. So we'll take a quick break What right now. And what we'll do on the other side is we're going to talk some Eagles. We're going to go through the entire depth chart. Awesome. We're going to compare who we like, who we hate. We'll see what we agree, disagree. I think we're going to agree a lot I because do. when I was doing the show, was nodding. you were nodding, nodding, nodding. Yeah. So this is the Zach Yelp Show. We're here with my buddy James. Big time now. <laughs> Big time. In a few months, he won't be able to join us. But this is the Zach Yelp Show. We'll be right back, everybody. Looking for the best custom apparel for your business? Campus Clothes, 920 The Jersey's official apparel provider, has the best. Offering a variety of clothes from top brands, including Under Armour, Adidas, Holloway, Columbia, and many more. Need a custom logo printed? No problem. It can be screen printed or embroidered on anything ranging from sweatshirts to polos or even coffee mugs with low minimums. Visit Campus Clothes in Ivyland, PA. Online at campusclothes.com. That's campus with a K, clothes with a K.com. Or call 215-357-0892. 
If you're considering going back to school, ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 100 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You'll earn the same degree as you would on campus, from wherever you are, on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. For information, call 1-800-481-5929. Learn for yourself why The Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 90% of ASU grads are recruited within 90 days of graduation. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU online degrees, call 1-800-481-5929. That's 1-800-481-5929. This advertisement is neither an offer to lend nor a commitment to funding. Pen Funding is a marketing and information firm for businesses. We needed cash, fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment. The banks wouldn't help us. Need cash for your business? Call Pen Funding. We help small business stay in business. If you're in business six months with $10,000 per month in sales, you probably qualify. Call Pen Funding now. Call 800 942 9090. 800 942 9090. I called Pen Funding and had my money fast. Pen Funding helped me stay in business. Pen Funding helped us grow. Pen Funding can save your business. We can help you grow your business. Make the call now. If you need cash for your business, call Pen Funding. We help small business stay in business. Need cash for your business? Call 800 942 9090 800-942-9090. 800-942-9090. Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Your new home for national sports talk, local talk, and other stuff too. National sports talk, like Dan Patrick, Colin Cowherd, and Jay Moore. Local talk, every weeknight and weekend. Learn, be entertained, and let your voice be heard with great local personalities. Other stuff. Check out our full schedule and more at 920thejersey.com. Oh, I like that. It's all here on the all-new Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. Zach Yelp Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. We're powered today by Corona Light, and we're broadcasting from Miller's Ale House in Mount Laurel, 554 Fellowship Road. This is the Zach Yelp Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey, 920 AM or 920thejersey.com. And I keep on having to promote that because we have big-time people with us here today. <laughs> John Clark joined us at 415, and, and we get usually a lot of big-time guests, they will say. Yes. We had on Bob Saget. Get um, out of here. That was awesome. I mean, Bo- uh, Bob Saget, when he was – I laughed for 25 oh, minutes. Awesome. I had to mute my mic. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and, that's uh, terrific. Well, we've had on like – You games. always – I mean, yeah. the, the little inside baseball for <laughs> anyone who didn't know Zach back at, at Temple. He was doing this at Temple. I've never seen a college radio station get – he had Bob Cox. Costas on and now my, I mean, you like, know what? The day was we amazing. had Bob Costas it was amazing. on, I actually got ridiculed. What? And, and I'll, I'll hold the name back, but I got ridiculed by someone because when we taped the spot because of Bob's diligent schedule. Yeah, he's a busy and, guy. <laughs> after, yeah, of course, right? <laughs> Bob Costas. When we did the interview with him, he forgot to call in for the first 30 minutes. So I'm sitting there. We already promoted this. I'm sweating. I'm a freshman <laughs> oh, no. in college. And I'm like, oh, well, 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 I'm going to look really bad here. And then eventually he called in and it was, he gave us a good, I think it was 15, wow. 18 minutes or awesome. so. But we played it on the air, and then I just said, all right, we'll be back. Uh, this is the Zach Yelp show, or it was uh, Temple Sports Hour. We'll be back. It was one of the days I was solo. So someone came up to me, and they go, you should have teased that a little bit better for your other break. And I wanted to be like, are you kidding me? We just had Bob Costas yeah. on. I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> Even though it's a tape spot, it just went great at play. There was Bob no technical Costas. difficulties. What else are you going to tease? Right? You might as well just end the show. Be like, all right, that, it's not going to get but, better. We're good. But we have the big time James Seltzer here today. I'm no Bob Costas. No, but no, but, but you're big time. You're BGN radio, and uh, now you guys are on Sports Radio 94 WIP. Two hours with BGN, and then you have another two-hour show. So that's four hours total. And I'm not great at math, but I could do two plus two. It's, it's good work. So right there. Uh, let's talk some Eagles because mm-hmm. that's your forte. Did you grow up as an Eagles fan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because big time. W- where did you grow I, up? See, I grew up in Manhattan. But that's right. I remember you from New York. My dad was from Cheltenham. So I grew uh, I, Worst possible thing you could be is growing up Lee's in Philadelphia. Hogan and all that stuff. But growing up a Philadelphia 
fan in the heart of New York. Like, I had to watch all my friends <laughs> celebrate a giant Super Bowl. Oh, in disgusting. I, 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 it was the worst. I grew up as a Patriot fan in New York. See, same thing. See, so I feel like I'm but, even but, a But I was able Eagles to fan. win. Yes. But thanks, when thanks, the Giants, thanks. I know no one's going to feel <laughs> sympathy for me. When the Giants beat my team twice, kids were lining up oh, as yeah. I would walk into school. And they were like, ha, 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 you son, blah, blah, blah. Because I would talk some snack. Yeah, the team course. was 18 and 0 at the time. Why yeah. wouldn't I? Yeah. But um, let's talk some Eagles right now. So with that being said, as uh, James joins us from BGN, and they're on Sports Radio 94 WIP, it's going to be great. Um, let's talk some Eagles. Let's go into the whole roster. Yeah, It'd be easy to start off and, you know, give everyone out some cupcakes with the frosting <laughs> and everything and talk about the positives. Let's talk about the negatives sure. first, and that's the offense. So far, with Sam Bradford, where do you stand? I don't think you can put Sam for the entire year. Eventually, you have to see Carson Wentz, especially with the way that these fans are going to be begging. Every time there's an interception thrown by Carson Wentz or he fumbles the football, uh, by Sam Bradford, I mean, uh, the fans are going to be saying, we want Wentz. Yes. Give us the Wentz wagon. Yes. So with that being said, how long do you think Sam Bradford lasts? <sighs> Man, it's, tough. it's a tough question because I think if it happens early enough, I think Chase Daniel will come in before right? Wentz. I really do. And you that's know? when this whole thing's going to yeah. set on fire and the link's going to yes. burn down. Yes, yes. I mean, he's Peterson's guy. I really do think what you were saying before, they want to give Wentz as long as possible yeah. before he said Because he isn't ready, really. As, as a D2 quarterback, there is a lot to learn. Having said that, and, and it kind of plays into my whole issue with this team right now, and you said it before or alluded to it, the fact that it feels like they're kind of pushing against each other. Yeah. In my mind, if you go out and you decide, okay, Carson Wentz is our future. This is the guy. I think you, and you trade up to two to get him. You have to do everything to build this team to be ready when Carson Wentz is yes. ready to go. And they keep, like, I mean, even the Tulloch move, which is fine. They need depth. But I, I don't need win-now moves. I don't care about how good this team is this season. I care about how good it is when Carson Wentz is ready to go. And, and I want them to start putting pieces around him. I think the Tulloch move was something to enhance the depth because they waited Yeah, they him. had to. I, but I also, it, but. I think it's a move that... It's a Buddy Ryan kind of move where oh, yeah. we're going to bring someone in, light the fire in the belly of Michael Kendricks, and then if Kendricks doesn't yeah, play well. you're exactly right, because they yes, have to do that. Right I mean, now Kendricks... they said they're not moving Jordan Hicks. They shouldn't move Jordan Hicks. But if Kendricks continues to play poorly, mm -hmm. and let's say this team surprises some people, which I don't think it will, then you maybe move Hicks, and then you have Tulloch, who has 100 tackles sure. at least six or seven times in his career. But the other issue with bringing in Tulloch and not starting him is I know they say that he could contribute on special teams. He can't. I mean, yeah, he, could, yeah. he could barely move. He's a first Maybe and second one down play. guy. That's what I mean. He's a first and second down guy at best. So. And a vet doesn't want to do special yeah, teams. Yeah, exactly. Well, of course not. So in that case, like, what, what, what are you doing with him? Is he literally just there as an injury replacement if you're not going to play him on first and second down? I also think he's someone that wants a paycheck, too. Yeah. And oh, no I know, why he, him. I know but, why he did it. Yeah, there is <laughs> no a brainer. reason. There's a reason why no one called him. Yeah, but exactly. There's a reason he was still he's out He's familiar. There. He's with Jim Schwartz. Yes. He doesn't have to learn this new complex system. Them. And you hope so that he can teach it. Good. You hope that he's going yes. to be one of those. I, from what I've heard, uh, I spoke with Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free yeah. Press. He implied that, that while he's not a bad guy, Tulloch is not necessarily that Chase Daniel teacher in the locker room kind of guy. Sure. So, you know, if, if, uh, you hope he can do that. But from but you have to adapt. That's yeah. what I think is a big thing. And everyone says, oh, yeah, he's, Ch he's Chase Daniel on defense. No, this guy actually has talent. Yes. This guy could actually <laughs> help you on the field. And that you need good. that in a season like this. Because you don't want to throw out Jordan Hicks coming back from an injury every single play. I agree you need with that. someone yep. to get a breather in there. And also with Tulloch, I think he's someone, though, that everyone raved about D'Amico Ryans. Should. They called him Mufasa. Yeah. Uh, and Chip I worked Kelly. for the team for the yeah. years. He was that guy. He like, was. D'Amico Ryans was a legit and, leader. And now you, yes, Michael Kendricks has been in the league for a while, but they don't really have that veteran presence. You don't, oh, yeah. You're not going to trust Nigel Bradham, who's younger. He's already shown that off the field. And what happened? So you bring in Tolik for that veteran presence. Well, that Bradham's a point, another another good point, because that's kind of an up in the air situation. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, we don't know what's going to happen with it's that. That story is crazy. It's like, it, dude, it doesn't look good from the yeah. optics of it. Yeah. You have well, the some optics old, don't look good a some lot old across the board here. Cabana boy, yeah. he's like a fifty-year-old man, uh. and he gets beat up, and then. It says, Bottle oh, broken over his head. And yeah, like, and, and then they claim that he hit his, his wife first and that, or his girlfriend. If that happened, then I can understand why you yeah. clocked him. But still, the whole situation, there seems something off there. And we'll eventually, hopefully, see the details. And hopefully it doesn't hurt the Eagles. Mm -hmm. But let's get back to this offense. Yes. Because that's where I want to start. So we, we talk about Bradford. And I think you're eventually going to see Carson Wentz for 
the last quarter of the season, the way I anticipate the Eagles season going. And I do agree. The big disaster would be if Bradford gets hurt, let's say, in the preseason or if he gets hurt in week two or three. Mm -hmm. With that being said, with the man that is going to coach Carson Wentz in Doug Peterson, we see what Andy Reid did. And they're clearly trying to model and replicate yes. that system. Yes. That's not a secret. He is an Andy Reid disciple, and I hope one of the alterations is in the clock management because yes, I was at that Patriots oh my God. Chiefs game, and I'm screaming. And did you hear Peterson's excuse for that? Yeah, I mean, it, was, uh. it was pathetic. But, but I'm someone that is sitting there in the stadium as a Patriot fan, and I'm screaming. I'm laughing. I'm yeah. like, what the heck what are, they, are doing? they doing? This I go, this is, is Super Bowl 39 all over again. Yeah. But with that being said, Doug needs to find his own voice. Doug still seems nervous when I see him in press conferences. Yes, he does. And he needs to take the reins and go, okay, this is my team. I'm the authoritative voice. How does he differentiate from Andy Reid? And, yes, you could take a lot of things from Andy, but you can't be – the same person as Andy Reid. You have to have your own spin. Yeah, I agree, and I don't know how he does. It's because fascinating. Yeah, because we haven't seen him differentiate at all. We've really seen him do exactly what Andy has done. Uh, I do like that they brought in guys with, you know, assistant coaches with head coaching experience like Schwartz or guys like Reich who've been in the league for a long time. Like, sure. I, I, I think there's, that a, there's a good support Pencil staff. Former Di players Filippo do. is a terrific quarterback coach. Like, I like that. I like the way they put the staff underneath them, but – yeah, I mean, I have all the questions in the world about Doug Peterson, especially, like you said, as a guy who you're expecting him to be able to come in and grab this locker room and say, this is my football team, and we have not seen a single thing in public. And with that's him. why I think he was hired, Yeah, because it's a safe hire. Of course. He's presented as a safe and they hire. And control him. He's and Howie's guy. Exactly. He's Jeffrey's guy, no question. It, exactly, I, and he's not going to go to Jeffrey and say, I need all control. Yeah, you he, need to move Howie's It was office. the exact opposite of Chip. They went from yeah. Chip, and they're like, all right, what's the literal opposite? And that's opposite? what happens when you fail. Yep. It, it, with the team, and it and was it's embarrassing. A it's a I shame. hated Chip. I couldn't stand Chip. And even after the first year when they went 10-6, and six, I wasn't ready to anoint Chip Kelly the, the lord and savior of the Eagles franchise. I didn't like him, and I saw the flaws in his play calling and the way that he didn't adapt and how you try to run a 1,000 plays in about five minutes. I didn't like that. What I will say about Doug, and I would have went with Sean McDermott, but I don't believe they could have controled Sean McDermott. Mm -hmm. So with that yeah, being said. I would have gone said, with Hugh Jackson. They absolutely right, could sure, not have controlled him. Sure, you couldn't control him. And, right. and they said, oh, we called Hugh Jackson. You yeah, yeah. called him at okay. like the last possible second. Yeah, let, it was on. like if I was going out on a date and some girl blew me off and I call someone and the, uh, the party's at 11 and I call them at 10.58. <laughs> that, that's what they did. Yeah, you're right. But, but with that being said, and, and where I evaluate Doug, we all have that perception that Doug is the puppet. Where I think we actually saw this be real was when the media asked the questions uh, with the Lane Johnson situation. Yep. And he has Doug no idea, man. ran his mouth too much. Mm -hmm. And then, well, Howie, I was at that practice. They put him out first. Yeah. No comment. Doug, no comment. I think behind the scenes where there was a communication issue on the Lane Johnson big thing. Big time. I mean, they didn't. Big time. Yes. Big time. It's a bad situation. I think that they went over to Doug and said, we're not talking about this anymore. And that shows where this power struggle and where it lies, it all lies in the hands. And this is not riveting stuff, but that's how it is evident to me that it's all in the hands of Howie and Jeffrey. Oh, I, I totally agree, and I think that we've seen it. We Look, I, I agree Chip had all kinds of flaws as head coach. He was an and, arrogant person. He, yes, but he also – like the whole situation in that building was super toxic. It was Whether, awkward. It was awkward, and, and I don't think that this organization, there's there, the power structure is still a question mark. Yeah. You know? I mean, they, they, Do you have confidence in what's going on? Of no. course not. It's, it's, it's a, it's a you-know-what. It's a cluster you-know-what. Yeah, what. we can't say it that is. on the radio. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's, um, it, it's really, it, honestly, it's my biggest worry about the team and the, the, the sure. franchise moving forward. A and, okay, so we, we talk about the offensive line. We talk about the quarterback. Now let's get into those fantasy players, yes. the wide receivers and the running backs. Don't take any of them in fantasy. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I did my draft. I have an eight-team league. It's just me and my close friends. Towards the end, I took an Ertz, and I said, you know what? I'll take Matthews as well. And I went into the draft. I think I said it on the show. You cannot draft any Eagle in free agency. <laughs> if you're going to draft an Eagle, draft the defense, but that could be risky as sure. well. Um, and I ended up drafting two. That's so I'm course. the biggest hypocrite of course in, you did. In, in that aspect. But what – I look at this wide receiving unit, it's awful. It's, it's really bad. It's so bad. And people could say, you hope Nelson Aguilar turns it around. You hope uh, you know, Jordan Matthews stays consistent, and Matthews has the injury, which didn't help. But it's this bad that Doriel Green Beckham comes in, and people 
are I'm trying to, to confuse savior. him with yeah. Odell Beckham. Yeah, no. And, and that's not the case. Yeah, especially with a guy like Green Beckham who, uh, look, he's obviously a very talented physical kid, but uh, – He's a knucklehead, and it's been very Frank clear. Frank I yeah. said it. it looks you, like Tarzan plays like Jane. That's, that's what Frank told me. And, we've heard, and, and you've heard that from multiple people. Mm-hmm. Uh, all about him doesn't run good routes, isn't, you know, focused on the game the same way. Is It doesn't seem like he wants to be a football player, and that's a real issue. And that's the reason you're able to trade Dennis Kelly for him, a backup yeah. lineman and, for and second Ruben round pick Randall. last year. Ruben Randall That guy stinks. is a bum. The, the, the Giants would not they let really him do. walk. The I, Giants would not let him walk if he was that good. I think that Zach Ertz is the only person on this offense who – could be considered a legitimate weapon. And yeah. even then, they don't use him, or at least they haven't used him correctly. So you we'll know who I like, though? And maybe I'm just falling in love Kenyon because of the Barner. preseason story. <laughs> no. Uh, he's Paul had a good Turner. preseason. Paul Turner. How I, great of a story is that? I love it. I love he, it. He's not going to be this 1,000-yard receiver. No. But if he could give you some solid receptions and help out what is a decimated yeah. wide receiving court, yeah, that's how bad it is that we have to rely on Paul Turner. Yeah, well, the, the real, if he makes the team, that's too. the real scary thing is when he becomes this year's Rashid Bailey or Russell yeah, Shepard, right? and he's like the first guy in the practice squad. This city is going to be so <laughs> angry, but it's like he's Paul Turner. Yeah. We can't get upset about this. Right? But you're right, and it's a great story, and it's nice to see, but I really do think he is probably not going to make the roster. Okay, that's fair, and that's a shame, too. It's a shame. Because you look at that kid, and they were talking about this on the NFL Network. You look at him. And he just looks like a football yeah, player. Yeah, and he plays like a football player. And, and they were talking about, um, you know, a friend of mine and Tyler Menekevich. Sure. Uh, who I covered at Temple. Couldn't believe he kept dropping. The, it's like, what are you doing? This guy is a football player. He that makes tackles. guy is going to have a 10-year career yep. in the National It was like Zach football. Thomas. It was like, you know, those types of guys he's who just. so good. Yep, I agree. And he's a player that was a transcendent player for Temple. And he's one of those players, yes. I told him this. You're not going to test well at the combine. You won't, Tyler. But you're going to use that in motivation, and you'll turn out to be a stud in the league. And he could not have gone to a place. Oh, my God. Place. Pittsburgh. Are you kidding me? Pittsburgh. Like... But I was screaming for the Eagles. Draft the guy. Yeah, Draft. I... I was jumping up and down. He would be perfect. Well, let's Hello. put it this way. I'd much rather have Tyler Matakevich than give $3 million to it's, Stephen Tulloch for yeah. a year. To it, get someone you can grow with and build. It, it's like McManus, too. The, the Eagles could have had Brandon McManus. He was in the backyard, wanted to play for Philadelphia, yep. and they couldn't get him. I know. And, now, uh, and good for Brandon because now he's yeah. the Super Bowl champ. Yeah, so. but he beat my Pats. Yeah. Well, so I wasn't hey, happy about hey, that. Hey. But once again, no one's going to feel sympathy for me. Yeah. So um, let's get to the running backs now. Running backs. It's, what it, excites you? Anything? Nothing. No, because you mentioned before. Look, Ryan Matthews is, is a good football player. He's a, he's a, a, a better running back than I think Nine, people realize. Games? If that. I mean, I, I, right? I, I don't count him for, for six. I mean, you don't know. You can't count him for anything. He's good if he's out there, but and he runs so hard and so physically, and he's clearly brittle. He's played 16 games once yeah. in his career. Um, I, I don't have any hope at Kenyon Barner. I mean, I know he's looked good in the preseason, but he's not a, a legit NFL running back. Wendell Smallwood, like you said, who knows? You know, it's it's a it's a real issue this offense. And I love skills Darren team. Sproles, mm-hmm. the the one player that is my favorite player. I would say on the Eagles has to be Darren Sproles. And I I went to the Eagles Giant game uh, the last two years at the link, and I sit there and I scream, "It's the Energizer Bunny! Yeah. It's Darren Sproles! That's what he does, He's man. tremendous!" And whenever that team needs a spark, he finds a way. The shame is though, underutilized. He's not even that too, but he's he can't. Every down. Yeah. He's, he'll be too fragile. Oh, no. And, yes, the guy has a tremendous heart, and he's tough as nails. He's tougher than See, anyone. 33 years old uh, now, too. Uh, 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 than us will be. Yes, and he's getting up there in age. But with his size, he can't take hits on first, second, and third down. No, I agree. And, and that's the unfortunate part. But they were even underutilizing him in, oh, yeah. you know, the well, third. That's Chip. Chip. That was Chip Chip's fault. I, that was, I, 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 it drove me crazy. It drove me crazy. Because remember when, when they, uh, you know, Shady gets here and they get Sproles, they're like, oh, my goodness. Right? Sproles and Shady in the backfield together. It's a it's matchup fantastic. nightmare. And he never did it. He did it, like, twice. It was, it was really frustrating to so watch. So Wendell Smallwood. It's been a disappointment so far. And I'm not going to kill him. Injuries more than anything. because of injuries. Yeah. What I don't is know. He's a fifth-round pick he? for a reason in my mind. Yeah. You know, it's like – that's Anyone why, who's counting that's on Wendell the game Smallwood this weekend be, is so telling. Yeah, espe- I, I, you know, I, I'm with you, man. I'm really, really down on this offense. I think they're a six-win team around there as the well. This is brutal. Yeah, I mean, like and, and the Lane Johnson thing is, is you had hope. You had hope with Lane Johnson in that situation because in the ideal world, Sam Bradford he gives you the nine, ten wins. You flip him at the end of the year, and without Lane Johnson, this offensive line is a major question mark. Yeah, and because. Peter's health was a question mark. It's still a question mark. Kelsey, I think he'll be better because of the change in philosophy yeah. on offense. 
But still, and he was this he offense, was banged up a lot yeah, last year. But this offense, it's a major question mark, especially on the offensive line when you don't have Lane Johnson. Yeah, and I'll take the Lane thing a step further. Is is you were talking about before guys you could build with to the uh, total moron. Like, what is wrong with you, dude? Seriously, just stop putting crap in your body. I mean, it's 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 so insane. Maybe it's because I'm not an NFL player, and I'll probably never make thirty five, thirty six million in my lifetime. But if you give me thirty five, thirty six million, yeah, guaranteed, yeah. and I just have to not do this. Even if I get hurt, I, I get the money. <laughs> yes. And I don't have to put that supplement in, the, yep. in my body. That is very telling to me. And I don't know Lane Johnson. Yeah. But psychologically, He's a moron. I believe that he thinks he needs to take that supplement, especially with the guy that has already been busted once. That's a fair if point. Why do you take twice, that risk? He needs it to yeah, play. Yeah, no. And look, who knows? He was a quarterback in, in high school. I mean, he got big quick. So yeah. you, you don't know how that happened. But I think Must that, have been a bruising quarterback. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but... It, I think the bigger issue with it is that it really calls into question. I mean, prior to the Carson Wentz trade, if you looked at this offense and said, who is the most important person Lane. on Lane jo- moving forward? I'm not talking about just this year. I'm talking about for the future. Yes. He is your left tackle. And now if he's got a 10-game suspension, two years is next. I mean, you he's – can't trust him. No, it, it's, it's, a, it's a disaster. It and, really is. And that may be a thing where you have to say, and this may not be a popular decision – and I know culture is the word no one wants to hear, yeah, but, but maybe where that, the culture go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But maybe that's a player that you have to say, all right, we have to find someone else to replace him. And it's a shame because he has the talent, but if he keeps on using this stuff yeah. and, and he takes no accountability, which well, really that's the problem. He blames it on everybody else. He's, exactly. It's never his fault. It's the NFLPA's fault. No, dude, it's your fault. You control what you put no in your body. No one Arenado only takes things that he gets from the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> like, why not do that? I don't get why te- people don't just go through their team. If a team gives it to you, you're okay. You know and- why? And I can't blame him. And I'm going to sound like a hypocrite once again. And I know that the money that is at stake – but people have asked me all the time, would you use yeah, of course. if you could make all that yeah, money? Yeah, no, it's hard and, to argue. And, and in a sport like the NFL, if you're using it for recovery, I can see why he would do that. But he's an idiot to yes. get caught. You he's can take other supplements to no, help you. Yeah, and they've made it very, you know, uh, from what you hear, it's not that hard to beat a drug test in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, no. And then, uh, yeah. Come on, it, all those guys are smoking uh, pot. Dude, uh, it's, it's, which is not a big deal in no. my mind for these guys. If, if they don't want to take Percocets and they want to smoke pot, fine, whatever. Right? Uh, I, yeah, I think there are some real issues with the, with the policies and all that as well. But And, and that's the thing that frustrates me because this city – deserves a Super Bowl. I agree. Man. The Eagle fan gets so much crap as someone that's an outsider. And yes, do they do stupid things? Absolutely. Of course. But you know what? They're not the San Francisco fan right. base We're not... that killed people. Yes. And, and, it, and, and that's where I think it's an unfair rap. And yeah, they do stupid things. The Ed Snyder thing was stupid. was stupid. But the Eagles are what run this city. Mm-hmm. And every time you wake up on a Monday and the Eagles give you a win, even in a season that you don't have high expectations for, you feel better. It makes it's your a week. religion. Your week is made, like made or lost on <laughs> Sunday. And, and that's why I feel bad for what's going on with Lane Johnson because not only did he screw himself, he screwed the quarterback situation right now because I don't want to throw Carson Wentz out no, this early really, yeah. with, with this crap offensive line, and you also screwed the fans over. Yeah. And that's why – He's enemy number one in my book right now. I, I totally can't agree. stand him. No, I totally agree. And I, I'll take that a step further with whether it's Lane and especially with guys like Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, you own an NFL football team. It's a public trust. Yes. It is your job. You have the hopes and dreams, and I'm not exaggerating, the hopes and dreams of an entire region. Of in your fans, hands. In your hands. Not many and it's your job to, to a fiduciary responsibility yes. to do the best that you can for them, and I don't think that's always the case. And that's why, and I made this point with both, and it's different scales, but I made that point with both the Giants and the Eagles. It is, yes, you don't have to tell the fans everything. But it is your responsibility when a major incident occurs, like the Lane Johnson thing. They don't have to address Lane Johnson yet because it's not official. But what they do have to address is, one, the communication problem, Mm -hmm. and then it's the same thing with the Giants. You already got an official word. That's why I blasted Josh Brown. I blasted John Mara and for his pathetic response. Be, but yes, deserves yes. to be blasted. I mean, that was outrageous. I only one for, game is outrageous yes, as well. Yes, it's stupid. The NFL's learned nothing. Yeah. If there's they a video it. about it's Josh Brown, yes. he, he gets He's a He's out of the league forever. You're right. It's, but, it's, it's insane. But here's the thing. I am willing to give a second chance as despicable as what happened and what occurred. But you need to show some remorse. 
And yeah. you see an incident with Ray Rice. I'm not defending what Ray Rice did. No, but, but Ray he's, Rice he's shown has done remorse. everything I right agree. I agree. since then. Yeah. And, and Greg Hardy, the opposite. Chance. Greg Hardy, was, right. that was the big, like, uh, all that, he's, like, making fun of it. He's making right. jokes and people. So Greg Hardy is a right. jackass. Oh, I can't I hate He's Greg my Hardy. least favorite person in sports. You know, just a terrible that's why human being. I think, you know what, I'll give credit to Lane Johnson. That's why they said a little extra mustard on those hits. I enjoyed that. Well, for Lane, it was taking some more supplements than hit. Yeah, hey. But, all right, so let's get to this defense. So with the defense, and we'll take a break in about two, three minutes or so, as this is the Zach Yelp show for Miller Jailhouse today. Um, the defense. I think it's going to be a fun unit. They mm-hmm. won't be the 85 Bears. No. They yeah. won't be the 2,000 Ravens. They're not a top five let's, defense. Let's, just even let's go there. not get yeah. carried away. But this, And that's our problem with society. We mm-hmm. use the word great too much. Yes. They're a good defense, and that front seven, hello. Yeah. It's oh, my God. I, I, you mentioned, that front seven's well, great. Well, you mentioned the guy. I mean, everyone knows Fletcher Cox is one of the best football players in yeah. the NFL. But you mentioned the guy, too, who's the most underappreciated in my mind. From ben, Louisiana. Benny Logan is so good, and I don't think people realize and how good he nice is. he's a nice person. And he, a sweetheart of a guy, and he's going to be even better in a 4-3 when he's not on that nose, and he can actually move around a little bit. He is going to be awesome in this system. And Vinny yep. Curry, I mean, they're, they're, this system fits those front seven guys to a T. You mentioned it before. The cornerbacks are a huge worry. I, I like Nolan Carroll a little bit as, as a second or third corner on a team. He's easily the best yep. corner on this team. I don't understand why Eric Rowe, it, why not just see what the kid has? He looked all right last year. I, I'm looking more for you there. Leotis McKelvin starting does zero for me. You know, I, I, don't, I don't get that. Nice extra player. Can't sure, be the star. sure, but he should not be starting. So, sure. um, look, I, I think people are getting carried away. And I love Jim Schwartz, too. I love the personality. He is Aggressive. Philadelphia. Yes. But he's also had some some bad teams before, and there's yeah. like you said, he's the reason he's not. A, he was a terrible head coach. Discipline, discipline. That's my one concern. Yep. You remember when Pettigrew, and that was an offensive player, yeah, of was getting unsportsmanlike conduct. And Sue and Sue, all, oh fairly, all, all those all guys. But with this Eagles team, and I, I love that you bring up what I talked about earlier with Benny Logan. He's such a gregarious guy. He when is. I was at Eagles camp, he came walking past the media. He's like, "Morning, everybody," <laughs> and no one said hello <laughs> back. And he goes. How rude are you people not saying morning back to and me? He's got that southern yeah, draw, like awesome. the deep bayou I would sound. love to have some gumbo with Benny Oh, Logan. my God. I would love to spend a day And get some real – New Orleans my, one of my favorite places me I've too. ever visited. I want that real authentic New Orleans food. <laughs> yeah. So I love Benny Logan. I like the front seven. We talked a little bit about the depth at linebacker and then the concerns at corner. The safeties I like. Yeah, I like the cloud and Jenkins. Yeah, Just the, stay healthy. Stay Let, healthy. Let's pray. Yeah. But where this defense, I think, gets screwed this year is the turnovers that are going to happen with the offense. Yeah. Once again – New coach, offense screwing the defense. Yeah, who knew? We <laughs> thought we got rid of it with Chip just Kelly. Just hopefully it changes after <laughs> one year. Yeah, no, look, it, like you said, look, it, it, I, I just think that people really need to realize that this is not a team that's competing this year. This is not a, a legitimate contender, and it's really all about. And that's okay. And it, that's the point. It's okay to be that way, but let's just accept it and, and look it. at it you know, for what it is. Trust. The process. process. That's right. Yes. Hate to say I don't it. hate to say it. But trust, trust the process. The process. All right. So R. James Seltzer is here uh, from <laughs> BGN, now a big-time radio superstar on the air and behind the mic producing uh, for Sports Radio 94 WIP. We'll talk a little bit more about BGN after the break, but we got to take a break. This has been a whole lot of fun. And uh, when we get back, uh, we're going to do a little baseball talk. Yes, uh, Only one to. local game tonight. And uh, we're powered by Corona Light today. If you want a Corona Light shirt, make sure you get it. We got Trent and Thunder, Reading Phillies tickets, and some free money, some scratch-offs. This is the Zach Gelb Show. We'll be right back, everybody. Question. I need to get shopping for our annual summer barbecue. Joe Canal's discount liquor outlet. Wait, I didn't even finish asking. Sorry. My brothers are coming, and I'll need to get that craft beer and fancy bourbon they like. Joe Canal's Discount Liquor Outlet. My mother will be there, so I'll need wine. Lots and lots of wine. Joe Canal's Discount Liquor Outlet in the Mercer Mall on Route 1 South in Lawrenceville. They know about everything they sell, which is everything. You can even order ahead at jcanals.com. Huh, well, I guess you really did have the answer. You're like a commercial or something. A what now? If you're looking for a great offer on a Cadillac, at Coleman Cadillac, we're offering 0% APR financing up to 72 months on a 2016 Cadillac SRX plus 5000 bonus cash. Save big this month at Coleman Cadillac next to the Quaker Bridge Mall. Here's something big banks don't want you to know about your IRA or 401k. You can get your IRA or 401k delivered to your home in the form of physical gold and silver coins. That's right. With Augusta Home Delivery Gold IRA, you can transfer a portion of your 
retirement savings into physical gold and silver coins delivered to your home. You get free shipping, free insurance, and no professional management fees. Wouldn't it be nice to get direct physical control over your IRA? Augusta Precious Metals, where coins have been the family business for over 40 years, is the leader in home delivery gold IRAs. Rated A plus with the Better Business Bureau, AAA with Business Consumer Alliance, and a 98% five star satisfaction rating with TrustLink.org. It proves you can trust Augusta. Call 855 858 5804 now for your free guide to Augusta Home Delivery Gold IRAs. Call Augusta Precious Metals today at 855 858 5804. That's 855 858 5804. Trust Augusta. Hey, it's Zach from the Zach Gelb Show here on Fox Sports 920 The Jersey. Thanks to Corona Light, the Zach Gelb Show is hitting the road. Corona Light presents the Zach Gelb Show live. That means every Thursday afternoon, 4 to 6, we're broadcasting the show live from one of your favorite bars or restaurants. Check out where you can find us on the Zach Gelb Show page at 920thejersey.com. Then be sure to stop by for great sports live talk and awesome Corona Light specials. See you there. Corona Light now on draft. Game on, lime in. Relax responsibly. The Trenton Thunder, double-A affiliate of the New York Yankees, are back for their 23rd season of play on the banks of the Delaware River at Arm & Hammer Park. Join us for Super Value Tuesdays, where kids eat for free and all fans can purchase $1 hot dogs, courtesy of Black Bear Franks. Stick around after the game for fireworks on select Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights throughout the season. Get more information online at TrentonThunder.com. All right, welcome back, everybody. Zach Gelb Show, final segment. Time is flying by here because we have an old friend of mine, still a friend. Yes. I don't want to make it sound like old we, and still. We may not see each well, other. Well, I am in four old, years. so it worked you, out. You are so old. It, it's true. You you're thir- you're 35, <laughs> I'm 22. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound great from the, the sounds of things that we're hanging out, but Why it, am it's I here? all right. <laughs> <laughs> Miller's Ale House in Mount Laurel. We have some great t shirts that were given away. Corona. Uh, T-shirts, so if you want one, just come on up. Uh, UFC, DVDs, uh, some free money somewhere. Pe- people love free money, right? I'd, some scratch I'll take offs. some free money. Well, I we can. That's a conflict <laughs> of interest there. Uh, and uh, James Seltzer is with BGN Radio, and now you guys are going to be on Sports Radio 94 WIP. And it's a four-hour show, so that's going to yeah, be great. we're excited, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I believe it will be uh, the first Saturday before the season's in That's time. awesome. Yeah. So tell me why. Everyone loves the Eagles, but yeah. why everyone – there's tons of Eagles shows out there. Why should people listen to your Eagle show? Well, <laughs> well, we like to say we're the only podcast out there. So uh, okay, <laughs> we we don't acknowledge. I'm the not going to touch other... that one because no, uh, then yeah, I'm no. going to get all these death there threats. There are way on too Twitter. many. Po- no, uh, it, look, it's just um, it, it's. I think we were kind of the first one out there with an Eagles podcast that we kept doing it and doing it. We just did our 182nd episode. So wow. yeah. So I, honestly, I think it's just being there and and always, you know, every week, you know, that that podcast that's. You know, your guys are there, and you can hear them every single week, and you develop a relationship, and I think that's kind of why it has lasted so long. So who are some guests that you'll bring on in season? Uh, we Last year we had Field Yates on a fair amount oh. from ESPN. Field is a, a, one of the nicest people I've met yeah. in this business. I don't know if you, you know everybody. No, yeah, 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 Field, yeah. Field's a I don't know him personally, guy. but He's I, an awesome I've guy. interacted with him yeah, a time. big fan of Field. Um, we've had uh, Phil Savage on the show with us before. Oh, I love We Phil. had uh, Super Bowl Sunday. We had Chad Lewis on. Oh, okay. It was awesome. Uh, we've had um, – you know, try and get as many good guests on as you I can. I like and Phil Savage. He's, he's such a bright football terrific. mind. Does the stuff with the Senior Bowl yep. now and is also well, the color so analyst of Alabama football. Yeah, he can talk college. He can talk pros. He can talk, you know, draft stuff. He's terrific, and he's, I love the Southern drawl that he's got. You know, and he just – it's awesome. I'm I don't want to put Savage you in an awkward team. spot because you just, you know, joined Sports Radio 94 WIP. Do you still bring on Kyle? That's the question. Uh, yeah, I broad. mean, we actually, I, you know, what's funny is I meant to ask John about, like, what we're going to do with that. I would think so. I mean, I don't think right? it, I mean, he came on 975. Why can't he come on WIP? You know, it's no. I just never know what the relationship Yeah, no, look, it's with us. Kyle's our guy. So. Okay, so yeah. perfect. That's yeah. going to be great. I can't wait to listen to that show. And, and I read Crossing Broad all the time. Yeah, no, it's, uh, he's done an now, awesome job with that site. Especially man. now that's going on with the landscape of radio. And I love Josh Innes. Josh yeah. has been extremely a benevolent person to me, and I think he's um, gets – you know, he's not portrayed in the best of lights to the public. And, uh, you know, with the race stuff, you can't touch that stuff. Sure. But it was going on at both stations. And I don't make excuses for what happened. I don't need to defend Josh or anything. He, he's a big man. He could do that himself. But but I did like Josh Innes a lot. And it's a shame to see him lose his job. Uh, but with that being said, that landscape of radio now in Philadelphia, uh, crossing broad, 
has yeah. done just such a great yeah. job in tracking all the radio wars and everything. And it's entertaining. It is. That's what it is. It's really entertaining. It's good content. And, and look, just being able to figure out that you can make a market of local sports yeah. radio is, is really and, clever. And I can understand why people in our business doesn't like that site because – yeah, you don't want to wake up and see yourself blasted <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yes. But you have to be a, a big boy in this business, and you have to take that criticism. Yes, and also, hopefully, you don't do things that make you have right? to get blasted. Uh, I got told the, other, the other night on Twitter, I, I like the Comcast Sportsnet segment uh, with uh, Tom McCarthy, Ben Davis, and Matt Stairs when they did the broadcast and Harry the Kays. And it's a 162-game season. It's a pedestrian season this year. There's not a lot to cheer for. So I was fine when the Fanatic dumped all the popcorn. And some guy tweeted me, he goes, you have the IQ of an 80, uh, of 85 IQ. Like, you must be stupid if you like that. I'm like, dude, piss off. Come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, people just love to hate sometimes. They do. Yeah. And, and I embrace those haters on Me Twitter. too. Oh, you have to. Not I mean, that I have, like, a whole look, lot of yeah, people if you, you For like anyone stuff. out there listening, and Zach will tell you this too, anyone who wants to be in this business, you better have a thick skin. Yeah, because right. Because people are going to hate you. <laughs> period. I, I have thick skin, so yeah. that, that, that can help. <laughs> All right. So, um. So, so with BGN, you guys are on. It's going to be great for Sports Radio 94 WIP. And, I, and what, what I think is great is you guys are Eagles fans. Yeah, big and, time. And that's what you need in Philadelphia. Yeah. You need Eagles fans. Yeah, you do. Like I said it before, we're a provincial city. We accept that. We know that. Yeah. We love our team more than anything. And, and like you said, man, there's, there is nothing like the love for the Philadelphia Eagles. Nothing. No. That it, city will burn to the ground when they win a Super Bowl. And uh, Runs on Duncan. I know you got a free cup of coffee. No, the look, city runs on true. the Philadelphia it's Eagles. It's true. So, um, yeah, we're, we're huge fans, and that, that's kind of what we try and relate to people is that, like, we're going to cover it, and we're going to be, you know, honest about our opinions. But in the end, we still want the team to win. And that's why it was bizarre last year because the Eagles were such a disappointing story. And then our alma mater, Temple, just came out of Which nowhere. Which was amazing. Boom. Well, and they were the talk of the town. Who, that was the best day, of football. Uh, even though they lost the game, yes. that, that get, college game day was, was the awesome. best football thing that happened I was all on the year stage. last year. I got to talk to Fowler came by and did 20 minutes in WHIP awesome, with man. us. We, we did all these interviews. Uh, we had Reese Davis on during the week. And it was fantastic breaking down the game. And I was on the, the game day set. So and then cool. I went over to the link. And I'm used to going to Temple games with no one being around. And I would go on with Harry Mays. Sure. And I know Harry well. I worked uh, yeah, with Harry for sure. Harry's years. a great guy. Great so he guy. put me on for their pregame show through mm -hmm. Temple. So I came on. I was all jacked up. Uh, I, I picked him to lose <laughs> the game. But I was getting real excited because yeah, yeah. I was about to do the play-by-play. -play, and it was a great opportunity. And I'm sitting there. And I start hearing in my headset, Zach Gelb, Zach Gelb. And I'm, I'm like, why do I hear my <laughs> name? And I look up. 20 people were chanting my name. I did not know them. Get it wasn't here. any of my, my jerk-off awesome. friends. It was, it, was, just... it was hilarious. It was 20 <laughs> random people. That's so cool. But that parking lot, it must have been 80,000, 90,000 people in insane. the parking lot. They had police uh, the, 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 on, on horses, and it was wild. Yes. Well, I, I walked out in my suit, and I've never seen so much beer just being <laughs> thrown around in the parking yeah. lot. It no, was well, awesome. Saw, as someone who did go to Temple twice and the first time I graduated – in 04, yeah. I never thought I would see my my team, my school on college game day, on college game day and, and on the national stage. And it, it, it was one of the best days I've had. Where I will disagree, though, I thought the best moment of the season, though, was beating Penn State. Yeah, you're right. When you, Yeah, you know what? I mean, obviously as a win and also for so long, you're right. And my wife went to Penn State, so it was extra special. Uh, that was fun. Uh, but, you wore the pants in the household yeah, that day. for once. <laughs> it was great. All right, so let's um, talk about a former Eagle quarterback. Yes. Tim Tebow. Oh, gosh. Now trying to have a career in baseball, yes. and he had a tryout yesterday. Katie Strang of ESPN.com had a bunch of quotes mm -hmm. in this. If his swing was any longer, it would take out the front row, and another <laughs> scout offered their opinion by saying no shot. Yeah. What's Tim Tebow thinking? Uh, it's, I, I hope he's not really thinking that he is going to get on a major league bid. Look, because if he wanted to, he could have gone and signed in the independent league. Like, someone would have taken him. Canadian in a second. football league? Yeah. Have no, a career like a Henry yeah, Burris. But no, even if he wanted to play for, like, the, whatever, the, uh, what's the Saint, uh, oh, God, it. anyway, an independent yeah. baseball league. You know, he could have Oh, okay, gone. you're talking about, I'm yeah, talking baseball. Yeah. I'm saying if he wanted to, he could have gone, played like for. The, the, the Newark Bears. There the, we go. Thank the Long you. Island Ducks. Exactly. And played and actually played in real games Somerset against Patriots. pitchers yeah. who can throw and, and have curveballs and this and that. Like that, if he really wanted to be a baseball player, go do that. Don't sure. hold a workout. Don't because <laughs> it doesn't do anything. What hitting batting practice? People are going to you know yeah. think you can play in a major league base. It's insane. The whole thing is insane and it's outrageous. Well, we're almost at the end of the show. So one more time real quickly. Plug what you
you guys are doing. Yes, it is BGN Radio on Sports Radio WIP. will be on Saturdays 6 to 8, and then me and John 8 to 10, or 4 to 6, and then 6 to 8 once the baseball season's over. We'll get it out there. Yeah, and you can follow us on Twitter at BGN underscore radio. You're the man. That's James Seltzer. Thank you, Zach. This job tonight with baseball. Uh, You have the Phillies off. They'll get ready to play the Mets in a three-game series starting tomorrow. Morgan Cologne will be the matchup there. Uh, For the Yankees, they're off tonight, and you'll have the Orioles. But the Mets do play tonight, four and a half back, and they'll be playing the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, 7-15 start tonight, Lugo versus Adam Wainwright. So that's all the time we have today on the Zach Yelp Show. Appreciate John Clark for joining us a little bit earlier, and then also James for stopping by for the entire 5 o'clock hour. We're powered by Corona Light today from Miller's Ale House. Tremendous show today. Also like to thank Lauren, Liz, Shin, and E for setting up the broadcast. And then, of course, Jenna Kirby back in the studio in the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios. So this was a tremendous show today. We will be back tomorrow, a big show tomorrow. Jihad Thomas talking some Temple football. And also Fooch will join us, the Rutgers sideline reporter. So that's all the time we have. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 4, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey, 920 AM and 920thejersey.com. I'm Zach Gill. Peace.